Hey everyone, this video is all about white balance and whether or not something like a neutral gray card can help you nail your exposure and nail your white balance in camera. Okay, so we're all familiar with white balance. We're used to using the temperature slider and the tint slider, and we understand that if we move the tint slider and the temperature slider in a particular way, we can really reach anywhere on the color scale, the entire gamut of color. But there's one important, interesting piece of history that I bet you don't know. Well, let me put it this way. I definitely didn't until I started researching this. Do you know why we call it Kelvin? why we measure temperature in degrees Kelvin? Well, it actually relates to William Thompson, Baron Kelvin, the Lord Kelvin, you know, the guy that discovered the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Don't worry if you don't know, I didn't either. Well, anyway, this guy, when he was researching in the 1850s, how carbon is burned, he realized that as you burn carbon, it actually changes color as it gets hotter. So when you first burn carbon, it starts off red. As it heats up, it moves to white, and then as it gets really hot, it gets to blue. And this correlation between temperature and color, well, he actually used this for some incredible things, like being able to understand the temperature of distant stars. He also served on the board of Kodak Limited, which was associated with Eastman Kodak, which is what we know as Kodak, the film company. And ever since then, we've translated this idea of color temperature to our photography. Okay, cool. Color temperatures of carbon, we can measure distant stars, but what does that have to do with our environment and this whole idea of color temperature uh, and white balance? Well, as we go through our day, the color is constantly changing. The temperature of the light that we're getting is always changing. At sunrise, where it's very orangish, well, that's a low color temperature. And then when we get to our brightest, most intense sun, that blue bright light, well, that's the highest color temperature. So color temperatures, as they sit on the actual scale, follow the Kelvin scale, where it goes from red to blue. And this is immensely confusing to me because I always think of this backwards. I think of cooler temperatures being blue and then warmer temperatures being red. And I can explain why I think this way. I'm curious if you do, because I think us photographers in particular and videographers, I, I think we've got it backwards and I can explain why. So if you're familiar with the idea of a film negative, I think you'll get this concept pretty quickly. You know, the idea that we actually have to invert the color and the light to be able to get to the final image that we want. And let's use this image that I took earlier today to be able to help illustrate. So this photo was taken at about 10 in the morning on an overcast day. The color temperature of the light was about 6,000 degrees Kelvin. So the light coming into the camera was a more blue light in terms of the color spectrum. For my editing software to interpret that blue light as white, it has to actually counteract that blue with yellow, essentially shifting the image towards yellow. And the same would be true if it was a cooler, more yellow color temperature. The editing software would shift it more towards blue, almost adding blue. So the slider that we see is actually showing the inverse of the actual color temperature. It's showing the opposing shift that would need to be applied to the incoming color to make it white. But let's digress to the more boring aspects of white balance, right? We understand this idea now of color temperature and where it comes from. And we recognize that color temperature varies throughout the day and it varies depending on the lighting situation that we're in. Well, as a photographer or a filmmaker, our job is to help our camera interpret it. And cameras are actually really good at this. They meter for light constantly. And there's different metering modes that you should know. There's, okay, hold on, I, I never actually look at these. Okay, so there's spot metering, where it picks a specific spot, or you pick the spot, and it takes that spot, the information in it, and tries to balance it so that it gets neutral gray. It's basically doing a complex algorithm to process and understand how to balance that image, hence the term white balance, to get neutral gray. There's also center-weighted average, where it's looking at the entire image with a weighted average towards the center of it, 
you know, center weighted average. So it's favoring the center of the image. And then of course there's multi-zone metering where it's taking multiple zones and doing those different calculations to try to guess at what neutral gray would be. And then some cameras even have extra sensors like an infrared or a visible light sensor that are outside of the image frame that do this same math and try to analyze this in the same way. And frankly, they're pretty good at it. The camera's meant for it. But here's the problem. If your camera's always trying to determine white balance, then every time you reframe your shot or zoom in or shoot from a different angle, you're changing the inputs and your camera might shift the white balance. And the same thing happens if you keep your shot consistent, but the light itself that's coming into the scene changes. For instance, if you're shooting something in a sunny day and a cloud comes between the sun and your shot. We don't want this to happen, particularly if we're shooting video, because we want our shots to look the same from shot to shot. So this is a problem. So if the lighting's staying the same, we can fix this quite simply. We can just take our white balance on our camera, lock it in, make sure it's set for the entire shoot, or the entire time we're at least shooting that lighting scene. We don't have to worry about it shifting. But it's not so straightforward and simple if the lighting itself is changing. And that's where this little gray card comes in. This is a specially calibrated neutral gray card that you can use to help your camera identify what gray should be. And then also something that you can include in your footage as a reference point for when you're editing to match different shots. In theory, it's awesome, but how does it work in practice? Well, I tested it out with a bunch of different photos and video uh, just to see how it was, what the workflow was like, if it was better than or as good as my camera. And to be honest, it works great. It's very easy to use. You just set it up in front of your camera, identify it as the target gray area. Your camera sets that white balance accordingly, and then you leave it locked in for your shoot. And then importantly, it's really helpful in editing because when I go to actually cut different shots together or if I look at different shots from different angles, I can see that, hey, this gray card, this should be the same color in each of these. This is what I can use to help calibrate the color of those different shots. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably saying, this is ridiculous. I'm not gonna use a little gray card every single time I need to set white balance and I'm not gonna include it in every single shot especially when my camera already does a really good job of analyzing and setting the white balance. And I agree with you, it is a little bit ridiculous and it is a little bit unnecessary. So I wanna to talk to you about three scenarios where I actually find this useful. The first one's pretty straightforward. It's if your camera's struggling to get the initial white balance. You might be shooting in a mixed lighting environment or your camera might not be getting the subject that you want, the color you want. And that's where a gray card comes in handy. I've had a couple instances where I'm in a scenario like that. Uh, so I whip out the gray card, stick it in front of the camera, set my white balance and I'm ready to rock. Now the second scenario that I would wanna use this is if I'm shooting with multiple cameras and in particular, if those cameras are different in any way. So for instance, if I shoot this with the Sony a7S III in S-Log, and then I shoot a different angle with my Sony a7R IV in a different picture profile, well then I'm gonna have two cameras with two different codecs, two different color mapping solutions, and frankly, two different lenses. So it's really helpful for me to use a gray card to help myself match those cameras when I'm editing. Now I wouldn't actually use the neutral gray card to set the camera's initial white balance, unless I was having issues. I would instead use the camera's built-in metering, and then I'd lock it, make sure it's fixed, and then I would manually input the same white balance information on my other angle or my other camera so that they're the same. But what I would do is I would make sure that I have this gray card from both angles in front of my subject so that when I go to edit it, I have the same neutral gray reference and can more easily match the two cameras. And then the third scenario where I would use this is if I'm ever planning to match the footage I'm about to take with footage from a different shoot, a different day, a different scene, or a different camera. It's not a lot of work to just pick this up for a second, toss it in the beginning of a recording sequence, and then you have it 
whenever you need it in the future to be able to match those different camera angles, those different shots, scenes, etc. So a quick caveat, I don't ever expect to use this for photography. I just don't feel that I need it. I shoot all my photos in RAW and in RAW, it's really easy to match different photos and set the exact same white balance because that information is kind of unadjusted. With video, it's a little bit harder because that information is usually baked in unless you're using a true RAW format, which I don't. So it's more important for me to actually use this on video and it's always handy to have in my bag. And then lastly, this is the most basic version of a reference card. You've probably seen the color checker passport things where it's got the full color spectrum and several different shades of gray to help you with exposure. You could also go out and buy a light meter so you could really analyze the different colors and the full light spectrum coming into a scene. But uh, I'm not going that far. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe and let me know if this is stuff you want me to keep digging into. Thanks.